Tuesday, November 22nd, and this is your Barbados Day evening news update. So glad to have you along. I'm Kemar Jordan. We begin with a story of despair and frustration. Exactly two years ago today, a large section of the main road in White Hills and Andrew broke away, severely disrupting the lives of residents. Today, the community of close to 300 people is still no better off, and the residents have all but given up hope that government will respond to their cries for help. Upset residents shared their plight today as opposition leader Mia Motley led a team of opposition Barbados Labour Party MPs away from Parliament to the rural district. Right now, we're living on a curfew to start with 7 30. There are children out here that are supposed to be going to university that cannot go because, as you can see, the shuttle bus that just passed there. When 7.30, that's the last trip from down there. There's no lighting in the area up there. So they can't come down there unless you have a search light or a phone light. And it's very dangerous as a woman. It is very dangerous to come through there at night, as you all can see. And it's like the water, the bus, you name it. Every problem possible. Government has pledged to relocate the residents, but only five residents have moved so far after the project came to a halt because of a lack of financing. Ms. Motley assured the residents that the BLP is concerned about their plight and she blasted the government for treating the problems at White Hill not as a priority. We've heard so many stories here today. And when you add to this travesty the lack of water, and these people are still paying their bills, they're still paying the road taxes, they're still paying the land taxes, you ask yourself, how can there be justice in this country and fairness in this country when there is two Barbadoses? I want to give them the assurance that we have heard their pleas, that we don't expect that miracles can be worked, but we expect that they can be given priority in the public expenditure of this country. You cannot build a building at Grotto for $28 million, have it closed up for the last 25 months, pay security, for garden and empty set of buildings and the people down here can't get gabions or can't deliver bridge or whatever kind of engineering works done to at least stabilize them. Even if you were moving them out, you would have to stabilize before moving them out. Yes. So it's a nonsense. You can't just ignore. In other news, more job cuts could be on the horizon for regional carrier Liat. Word of this from Tourism Minister Richard Seeley as the House of Assembly discussed the regional carrier during debate on a resolution for supplementary estimates. Liat is on course to record more losses of over six million Barbados dollars this year, and shareholder governments are demanding that the airline streamlines its operations and operates more efficiently. When the Honourable Member for St. Michael North was in the Ministry of International Transport, there were 1,200 people working at Liat. There are now 669. This government has made tough decisions because we understand that it can't be business as usual. That's the reality. And you know what? We're probably going to reduce that staff count by another 30. Yeah. Now, it is true only 90 of those people are based here. Most of them are based in Antigua. But we are trying to run a lean, mean, and more efficient operation, but at the same time not compromise our social responsibility to the people of the Caribbean. Meantime, St. James Central MP Kerry Simmons says the Barbados government needs to clearly outline a plan for the future of LIAT. He raised concern that while Barbadian taxpayers are paying heavily to keep the carrier in the air, they have been left in the dark by the government. And I think, sir, it is hurting the, the, the airline even outside of Barbados because the people of the region who use LIAT are also not being seriously engaged as to what is the long-term intention of either the Barbados government or other the other shareholder governments for LIA. And we can't just have a situation where <coughs> leaders of government and ministers of tourism, international transport, shout across the water at each other. The time has come for us to have a coherent and sensible discussion on some of these things. These things are impacting not only the psyche and the confidence of the market, which must travel, but it's also impacting, Mr. Chairman, the employees. To sports now, the West Indies women defeated Indian, their Indian counterparts by 15 runs to complete a 3-0 sweep of the 2020 International Series in India today. 
a solid half-century opening partnership between Haley Matthews and Captain Stephanie Taylor, laid the foundation for the Windies 139 for four in 20 overs after they won the toss and elected to bat. The bowlers then suppressed the Indian run chase, restricting them to 124 for three in 20 overs. Well, well done, West Indies women. There's regional and international news after this short break. Read all about it, read all about it. Get your paper. Only 225, let's get your paper. You again with that stale news from yesterday. I got the barbers today at found my phone and I just get my news for free. What do she? The Barbados Today, news you can trust. What Maisie, this Christmas to be the best bed on Christmas for we. Maisie, it is all because we public fight just like Santa Claus. Maisie, fix up the kitchen and a new TV we get in. A special time to commemorate. Republic will help you celebrate. Get ready to celebrate 50 years of independence right through to the best Bajan Christmas ever with a Make It Happen loan of up to $50,000 from Republic Bank. Give your home a good old Bajan spooza. Buy some new furniture and appliances or take an after holiday trip to visit loved ones over and away. You could also be one of our lucky winners to share in fabulous prizes. Just visit any branch to apply. Go to RepublicBarbados.com or call us at 227-2700. We're also available via Skype and FaceTime. Special conditions apply. Public Bank, we're the one for you. Oh, these papers ain't selling at all, at all. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, get your paper. Get your paper, miss. No, take it, take it, I can pay for it. Barbados today, all the way. <laughs> the Barbados today, news you can trust. Now, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SADEMA, says the Caribbean community's response to Haiti following the devastating passage of Hurricane Matthew has been a resounding success. According to the Barbados-based SADEMA, CARICOM supported the rehabilitation of a school in the hard-hit Les Skies, operated a two-week feeding program for students, and provided $53,000 U.S. dollars in relief supplies to over 800 families. SADEMA says Dominique and Jamaica also sent in containers and donated 100,000 U.S. dollars to support the regional efforts, while the Turks and Caicos gave 50,000 U.S. dollars and dispatched personnel to aid in the recovery process. Hurricane Matthew, as you recall, claimed more, more than 546 lives and displaced more than 1 million people. The International Medical Humanitarian Organization, Doctors Without Borders, is lamenting the gross disregard for life in areas of conflict across the world. One official told a lecture on challenges of humanitarian work at the University of the West Indies last night that millions are suffering. He lamented that even hospitals have become bombing targets, and in places like war-torn Yemen, women feel safer delivering their babies in caves. Insecurity is a big challenge, so much so that both ICRC and MSF have launched campaigns to uh, uh, address policymakers to get them to change some, some, uh, or bring some international commitment to prevent uh, attacks against health facilities, patients who are in hospital. It is so bad that in Yemen today, women are choosing to give birth in caves rather than go to hospitals. When I started as a humanitarian worker, hospitals were safe spaces. Once you get in, you're safe. You don't get bombed. In fact, we used to put a big cross on the top of the hospital so that planes flying over could, they will know that it's a hospital and they would spare it. Today, if they see that sign, they use it as a target and they destroy it. What is really stunning is that there's no outrage. Today, four out of five UN Security Council members are part of coalitions that bomb hospitals, China being the exception. Right? So that is, so when the, the moral authorities and the moral guardians are doing it, then, you know, of course, there's no outrage. 
Well, on that note, we end this evening news update, but there's more on our website at www.barbadosday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper or email updates, or you can like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay in a supermarket or a gas station near you. Also, check us out on Channel 99, that's on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Do have a blessed and a peaceful evening. And be sure to log on to check out Emmanuel Joseph first thing tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.